Hello, child of God. Several U.S. presidents have been working in the background to divide Israel. Obama is certainly not the first to try. However, this visit Obama made to Israel is especially alarming. Obama came professing to be a friend of Israel, but was actively working to push Israel to surrender back to its 1967 indefendable borders. Politically speaking, Obama's long-range plan is to allow the UN to declare Palestine a nation. All Israeli land that the UN claims to be occupied territory will officially become Palestine. The United Nations money and soldiers will be available to force Israel back to its 1967 borders. The USA could veto this measure in the UN, but will abstain its vote because Obama wants Israel to surrender its God-given land. Politically speaking, Obama, Russia, and the European Union are allowing the United Nations to do its dirty work. Prophetically speaking, Almighty God is now waging a war against the USA, Russia, the European Union, and certainly the United Nations. The same day Obama visited Israel, the USA was sentenced to a higher level of terror and destruction. As evidence, I am presenting some of the most unusual news of things that happened within the first 30 days following Obama's visit to Israel. At present, Almighty God is just warning us to back off. But you can see the world is going to experience the same terrors that Israel has been living with since the day it was born, May the 14th, 1948. At the weekend, North Korea announced it was entering a state of war with the South. Earlier in the month, Pyongyang affirmed its right to launch a preemptive nuclear strike on the U.S. The U.S., for its part, has conducted several joint military exercises with South Korea, mimicking the bombing of North Korean targets and the removal of its leadership. During the time Obama was visiting Israel and lecturing the students to divide Israel, North Korea began its saber-rattling again. This time, it was the most provocative since the end of the Korean War. North Korea actually declared war on South Korea and the United States of America. Obama had left John Kerry, the United States Secretary of State, in Israel to continue the plans to divide Israel and to work with Jordan, Turkey, and other Middle East issues. It was no surprise that he had to leave that work to attend to a more pressing issue, the insanity of North Korea threatening a nuclear war. On April the 2nd, 2013, in a joint briefing in Washington with the South Korean Foreign Minister, John Kerry warned that the United States will not accept North Korea as a nuclear state. The bottom line is simply that what Kim Jong-un is choosing to do is provocative. It's dangerous, it's reckless, and I reiterate again, the United States will do what is necessary to defend ourselves and defend our allies, South Korea and Japan. We are fully prepared and capable of doing so, and I think the DPRK understands that. By the way, North Korea has conducted three nuclear bomb tests. The most recent test was in February. North Korea has said that its nuclear weapons are a deterrent that are no longer up for negotiation. As you saw from a statement from the FBI as well as a statement from the United States Secret Service, there was a letter uh, sent to, addressed to the president, uh, that at a uh, off-site a mail facility uh, uh, was noticed to have contained a, subs a suspicious substance uh, and uh, tests were uh, undertaken. Uh, the FBI has the lead in that investigation, of course, and has said in its statement that uh, they will be conducting further tests to determine uh, what the uh, nature of the substance is. Of course, there was another letter, as you know, sent or, or detected by Capitol Police uh, that uh, was sent to a United States senator. That also has been uh, is a subject of uh, the investigation by the FBI. And for more information about uh, these matters, I refer you to the FBI. The President, I'm sure you'll ask this, the President has of course been briefed on these letters. Uh, he was briefed last night and again this morning. Whoa. Something just blew up at the... <laughs> Run! Go! 
some new images released in the aftermath of that bomb blast at the Boston Marathon. An intelligence bulletin issued to law enforcement shows a picture of a mangled pressure cooker that was part of a bomb that exploded at the marathon. It also has a picture of a torn black bag. The bulletin was obtained by the Associated Press. The FBI says it has evidence that indicates one of the bombs was a pressure cooker that contained nails and ball bearings and was hidden in a backpack. They say the other explosive was in a metal container, but there's not enough evidence to indicate if it was also a pressure cooker. It's not yet known what was used to set off the two explosives. Three people were killed and 170 others were hurt in the blast. Bianca Davy, Associated Press. A shootout between police and their suspects in Watertown. This is where officers finally tracked down the men they believe carried out the Boston Marathon bombings. They'd been alerted by reports of a shooting and a carjacking. When they arrived on the scene, they were fired upon. In the exchange of the gunfire, we believe that one of the suspects was struck and ultimately taken into custody. A second suspect was able to flee from that car and there was an active search going on at this point in time. People described seeing and hearing the suspects throwing explosives at police and then opening fire. I heard a loud boom uh, and then a rapid succession of pop, pop, pop. It sounded like automatic weapons. Uh, and then I heard the second explosion and then there was the smell of something burning in the air. Uh, we were still going toward it and then residents from the windows, they shouted, hey, it's gunfire, don't go that way. One man who lives very close to the incident got a very clear view of the suspects. Uh, they also had what looked to be a like a pressure cooker bomb. And, uh, and I had about a, a clear line of view on that from about 30 to 40 feet away from my bedroom window. The standoff began when the suspect in the white hat seen here robbed a convenience store at gunpoint near the MIT campus. When a police officer investigated that, he was shot and killed. The two suspects then used a car they'd hijacked to get away. But they were pursued by police, and it led to an exchange of gunfire. Eventually, they were cornered into a residential area of Watertown, where the second suspect got away. Police say he is very dangerous and have asked for the public's help in tracking him down. Dominic Kane, Al Jazeera. Authorities say one of two suspects in the Boston Marathon bombing is dead and a massive manhunt is underway for another. Residents of the Boston suburb of Watertown have been advised to keep their doors locked and not let anyone in. Police have released a new photo of suspect number two shown in earlier footage wearing a white hat. In the new photo, he's wearing a gray hoodie sweatshirt pulled up on his head. Authorities still aren't sure how many people were killed in Wednesday night's blast in West Texas. More than 160 people were hurt. Thursday evening, hundreds packed a local church for a non-denominational service to pray for the victims and their families. Let me sum up the last 30 days since Obama visited Israel with the intention to divide Israel. A mentally unstable person mailed ricin to a judge, a senator, and the president. A group of Muslim extremists bought their ticket to heaven by murdering innocent marathon runners. And a madman in North Korea declared war on the USA and threatened a nuclear attack. Since North Korea has used this type of extortion in the past, we assume it's just more the same. After all, it is unthinkable that any madman would attack us. Actually, considering if we retaliate against North Korea, we would accidentally kill billions of Chinese citizens by radiation poison, nuclear fallout. China would be forced to retaliate against us and revenge its people. Since Satan comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, we can surmise that these are only warnings of the horrors to come. These are warnings that Almighty God is removing His hand of protection from the United States. And unless the nation repents, we will experience even greater destruction. Read with me the message of the four carpenters sent to destroy the dividers of Israel. Then I looked up, and there before me were four horns. I asked the angel who was speaking to me, What are these? He answered me, These are the horns that scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. I asked, What are these coming to do? He answered, 
These are the horns that scattered Judah, so that no one could raise their head. But the craftsmen have come to terrify them and throw down these horns of the nations who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah to scatter its people. I mean, the big issue is obviously Palestinian state on 1967 lines with land swaps. Okay, let's see, you know, let's see where the parties stand on that issue. Now let's try to identify the characters in Zechariah's vision. Word. After Zechariah hears the words that he is to proclaim, he sees a vision of four horns. He then asks the angel with the red horse, what are these horns? And the angel with the red horse explains that these are the four horns that are against Judah and are trying to use their horns to scatter its people. Then Zechariah saw a vision of four craftsmen. The angel with the red horse answered, The craftsmen have come to terrify and to throw down these horns of the nations who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah to scatter its people. Well, everything seemed to be easy up to this point. The question becomes, who or what is a carpenter and what in the world are they going to do to us? Dave Brenner in his books pointed out that every action any president in the United States takes to divide or harm Israel causes a national disaster in the USA. This seems to also apply to the EU, to Russia, sometimes it even affects the entire world, like the worldwide financial depression. Terrify and throw down these horns of the nations who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah to scatter its people? I just want to make it very clear that Almighty God, sovereign of this universe, has sent some spiritual powers to destroy the USA, Russia, the EU, and the UN. If you're not terrified, you should be. إلى الولايات المتحدة كفيلة بقتل ثلاثمية وثلاثين ألف أمريكي في ساعة واحدة إذا أتقن نفرها على الوعاء السكاني هناك مرعبة الفكرة يعني 11 سبتمبر تطلع زلاطة عند الموضوع هذا صح ولا لا وما في داعي طيارات وشكبانات ومواعيد وقصة من المؤامرات والتوقيتات واحد عنده من البسالة اللي يدخل مع أربع أرطال من الأنثراكس ويدخل حديقة البيت الأبيض صح ولا لا وكت عليهم النون النون هذا صح ولا لا ويبب عقبها تصير المسألة طماشة هناك لكن الناس المتابعين يدرك بأن القاعدة عندها لابوراتوريز وعندها مثل حزب الله حزب الله عنده لابوراتوريز في جنوب لبنان أصبحت تنتج السلاح وتبيع السلاح حزب الله عنده لابوراتوريز في جنوب لبنان أصبحت تبيع على رومانيا وهنغاريا و انتو بس يقولون ارهابي قول هذا رفيجنا ليش لان هذول الارهابيين بين قوسين اتقى ناس في العالم واشرف ناس في العالم واحسن ناس في العالم كيف now is how do we get a sovereignty for the palestinian people and how do we assure security for the Israeli people. And that's the essence of this negotiation. And uh, that's not to say settlements are not important. It is to say that if we solve those two problems, the settlement problem will be solved. A view emphatically rejected by Mahmoud Abbas. It's not only our perception that settlements are illegal, 
but it's a global perspective. Everybody considers settlements more than just a hurdle to the two-state solution. Just one of the many hurdles described in detail by the U.S. president, who urged the crowd to one piece without describing how he might help them get it.